In today's video, we're going to continue on with our series where we're covering all 31 NHL teams, recapping their 17-18 season, and making a 2018 offseason plan as to what we should expect from these teams in the offseason to move forward and get better for next season. Today's team we're looking at is the Minnesota Wild, and that's coming up next. Hey everyone and welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. We review and discuss all 31 NHL teams. So if you're a huge hockey fan, consider subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Alright, so as I mentioned off the top, today we're talking about the Minnesota Wild, recapping their 17-18 season and looking ahead to the offseason here for the summer of 2018 as to what we should expect from this team to move forward and to try to get better for next season. As we all know, the Minnesota Wild had a pretty decent season, made the playoffs, lost in the first round against the Winnipeg Jets, so they didn't get to move forward for their playoff push like they were hoping for, uh, but they still had another solid regular season. This team seems to have a lot of good regular seasons, but this can't get over that playoff hump. Uh, obviously, we saw teams like the Washington Capitals in the past had that same trouble, and they came over that this year, won the Stanley Cup. So what's it going to take for Minnesota to have similar fate and move forward to have a chance to be a contender like the Washington Capitals did this past season. So let's take a quick look here at their 17-18 season. Let's recap how things went a little bit more in depth. Now they finished with a 45, 26, and 11 record for 101 points. That put them in third place in the Central Division behind Nashville and Winnipeg. So it's a very tough, very competitive division that they play in. Uh, so to finish in third place with 101 points is very impressive in my opinion. Now they also finished with 250 goals for, putting them 11th in the league. So that's pretty solid. It's respectable. You know, you're just outside the top 10 in the 31 team league that's nothing to be ashamed of your goals against was 229 which puts them in 21st now obviously that's getting towards the lower half of the league uh, that's something that they need to have a look at for next year to try to cut that down a bit for sure uh, power play percentage was 20.4 percent so it's a respectable percentage put them at 18th in the league i'm sure they wouldn't mind making it a little bit better uh, to work their way up the league rankings but really anything over 20 percent is certainly decent and respectable uh, the pk percentage was 81.3 for 13th so that's pretty decent as well uh, their face-off percentage was 49.8 which put them 16th so pretty much uh, right in the middle of the NHL. So face-offs, PK, power play, a lot of things were, you know, hovering around average or, you know, slightly above in a lot of cases. Uh, goals for was pretty decent. Goals against, uh, certainly an area to kind of keep some focus on. But I don't think they have a ton of work to do there. They do have some pretty solid defensemen. They have a pretty good goaltender. So uh, obviously they need to make a few adjustments, but I don't think they have anything like a major case where they really have to focus hardcore on the goals against next year. Now let's take a look at some individual results, some bright spots here for the team, some good performances. Obviously, Eric Stahl was a huge story for this team this past season. What a bargain contract that has turned out to be. A lot of people, myself included, thought when he left Carolina that his play had drastically declined and I didn't think his career was over, but I certainly never expected him to bounce back and put up numbers like this. Even when he went to the Rangers out of Carolina, that didn't go over so well. His numbers there weren't very good either. I got signed by the Minnesota Wild, which appeared to be like a value type contract for a veteran. And he's really delivered. I mean, he put up a tremendous performance last year, scoring 42 goals and 76 points. Now the big question for me moving forward is can he do that again? That's gonna be the, the, the big question uh, for this team, which we'll get into here momentarily as we discuss the offseason stuff. Uh, Jason Zucker had a tremendous year, uh, 33 goals. That was a big improvement for him. I thought on the back end, I thought Ryan Suter and Matt Dumba had uh, excellent seasons as well. They both put up 50 plus point seasons. And I thought that Granlin had a solid year as well, putting up 67 points. So there's certainly lots of things to like about the Wild. They have a lot of things going well. Um, you know, let's take a look at some things that kind of didn't go so well for them this past year. Uh, obviously, Zach Parise, uh, really, and it's not that he's played poorly, but the poor guy can't stay healthy. Uh, he's had health issues for so long. Uh, really, this contract that they gave when they signed Parise and Suter uh, a number of years back here, those contracts were... You know, it's certainly questionable as far as the length and the dollar value. I mean, I thought they were kind of high-risk contracts, but of course that was before some of the rules changed around contracts and how long they could be. Uh, but this is an absolute albatross of a contract considering how much longer he's on the books. And really, um, it's been a while since he's put together a solid 
uh, productive, healthy season. So it's, it's, he's still a good player. When he's in the lineup, he is contributing. The fact is, is he's hardly ever there. He jumped into 42 games this year, put up 24 points, which isn't fantastic, but certainly part of that was, you know, after coming off an injury and, and kind of battling through another, like it, it was tough. He did play pretty decent in the playoffs. So I will say against Winnipeg before they get beat out, I mean, he got ended up leaving the series early uh, with another injury yet again. Um, so, you know, he just seems like he's made a glass and he keeps getting uh, injuries that keep him out long term. So, you know, I feel for the while it's a, not a good contract to have. He's a good, talented player. Uh, it just, he, he can't catch a break and, and stay healthy. So I'm not sure what they do with Parise long term. Probably not a whole lot they can do here, really. Um, Charlie Coyle, I thought, continued to disappoint. Only had 11 goals this past year, uh, 37 points. Uh, they need more out of Coyle, and I think it might be time they seriously need to consider moving on from him. Uh, Marcus Foligno and Tyler Ennis, who came over from Buffalo, I didn't really feel either of those guys really had a solid season, uh, and I don't think uh, Ennis is going to be around much longer, which we'll jump onto here now in the offseason plans. So for the offseason stuff, we're going to take a look at their contract situations, uh, any UFAs they have pending, RFAs that need new deals, and maybe some trades that they might want to look at as well um, to move forward and try to better this roster for next year. Now, they don't have a lot in the way of UFAs, mainly Matt Cullen and Daniel Winnick. I'm pretty sure we're going to see Matt Cullen retire. I'd be surprised if he came back for another year, but you never know. But it would surprise me. Uh, Daniel Winnick, it, that's a tough call. He could come back. He may not. Um, you know, he's been around the league a long time. He could fill a bottom six role, but they very well might choose to go in a different, different direction. Obviously, one of the other things that happened this past year at the end of the year, which is going to impact their offseason plans, is that general manager Chuck Fletcher was let go. Uh, owner Craig Leopold made that move at the end of the regular season. Uh, and they now have general manager Paul Fenton in place. Obviously, Fenton knew Leopold from his days as being the owner in Nashville. Uh, and so we'll see. This is Fenton's first crack at being an NHL general manager. He's been an assistant general manager, though, with the Predators for a long time and often was accoladed as being a really, really good at his job. Uh, so we'll see what he can do. He certainly deserves an opportunity uh, to be a general manager, in my opinion. And I thought this was the perfect fit for him, seeing the ties to the owner and everything like that. So it makes a lot of sense that they went with Fenton. And we'll see what he does with a lot of these contracts. But I could see him certainly moving on from Cullen and Winnick both try to make this team a little bit younger and faster, which is the trend in the NHL right now. As far as RFAs, they do have some interesting guys to keep your eye on. Matt Dumba and Jason Zucker both need new contracts and they're both going to get a fairly significant raise in my opinion. Um, Dumba maybe more than Zucker. Um, Zucker had a tremendous year, but I think Dumba's been kind of performing at a higher level for a little longer. Um, so it's hard to say where they go with these guys, but they both need new deals. They're both going to get pretty decent raises. I've even heard Zucker's name mentioned in trade rumors. I think that would be silly of them to move him along. There's some other guys that would probably make more sense to trade. Um, but depending on the contracts and how things go, I guess we'll see what how Fenton handles all this. I have a lot of young guys that are you know that have seen a little bit of time with their lineup so far, and they have some more prospects coming. So there is a lot of things to be optimistic for for the future here for this team. I mean, obviously we saw Jordan Greenway make his debut and get into some games this year. I mean, they still have Erickson Eck. I mean, he looks like he has the potential to be a pretty decent player as well. I mean, they've got uh, they've got Luke Coonan as well in the in the system. I mean, he's a pretty solid prospect. They got Kaprizov. Uh, now, the thing with Kaprizov, though, is I know I see a lot of hype around him for Minnesota fans, but he's not going to be coming over for a while. Uh, he signed in the KHL until 2020, so we're looking at a couple more years away before he makes his debut. Um, so, and obviously, they'll see who they select in the 2018 NHL draft. Even though they were a playoff team or a little bit lower down the first round, they still have an excellent opportunity to grab a decent prospect who would be a year or two away from making their lineup. Uh, depending on what they decide to go with, there should be a complement of uh, defensemen and, and forwards there to, to consider taking with their first round selection. The NHL window to, for buyouts is coming up here soon. Opens on the 15th, runs to the end of June. Uh, Tyler Ennis' name has been brought up as a potential buyout candidate. Uh, he does not have much time left on his contract, did not perform well. So that deal would kind of make sense to kind of move him off the roster and free up a little bit of cap space. So look out for that. That's something that would not surprise me at all. Um, obviously, you know, if you take a, take a look at the rest of their roster, Roster, though, what they really need to do this year, besides those contracts that they have pending, they, they really need to shake things up amongst the forward group, in my opinion. Uh, they have, uh, they need some more speed and some more scoring. I mean, Parise, unfortunately, has not been able to deliver on that contract. You've got Eric Stahl, uh, who put up a fantastic, you know, 42-goal season last year, but is he going to be able to do that again? That's a big question, and it might sound crazy, but maybe they should 
consider trading him. His value would be at an all-time high. He's got a tremendous contract uh, for what he delivered last year. Uh, so you have to kind of take a gamble on whether or not he's going to follow through and have another big 30-40 goal season. I mean, can he do that? I mean, if you're confident he will, you hang on to him. But, you know, at the same time, like you see teams do this all the time where they hang on to players too long before they trade them. They, then they have no value and they get hardly anything in return. But I mean, I guess it depends on if they think he can repeat this type of performance. Um, I certainly have my doubts. I'm not going to say he won't, but it's it's just at his current age and where everything is at, I think it is a little bit doubtful that he puts up another 35 to 40 goal season. But I guess time will tell. We'll see if I'm right. But either way, they need to shake up that forward group. I mean, they've had some guys up there like Coyle and Niederreiter. Um, and they're just kind of not getting the job done. So I think they need to kind of shake up that core a little bit, give their young guys a little bit more ice time, and maybe look at bringing in some other guys who can score. There's plenty of wingers on the market um, who can provide scoring. I mean, we see rumors about Jeff Skinner, Mike Hoffman, you know, just to name a couple. There's plenty of other guys out there similar to them that could probably be traded for. So they certainly need to look into that, I think, and bring in some more scoring uh, within the forward group and kind of shake that up. I mean, if you look at their back end, they do have a pretty solid top four. I mean, if they're able to get a new deal worked out for Matt Dumba, they've got Ryan Suter, they've got Jared Spurgeon. You throw in Jonas Brodin into that top four, and then, you know, that's a pretty solid group right there, really, in my opinion. So they don't need to do a whole lot on defense. they got Devin Dubnik under contract for a little while yet, uh, and he's put up some pretty decent numbers. So they have a pretty solid goaltender. They have an excellent top four D. They, they just need to, they need to shake things up up front. They need to get some more youth and some more speed and skill mixed in there, which is the trend around the league. It's easier said than done, but if they can make a move or two to try to bring in a scoring winger or two, maybe move out Ennis, maybe move out Coyle. I'd consider Niederreiter as well. Uh, you know, if they can move out some of these guys and shake it up with some skilled, faster skaters, um, then I certainly think that that would certainly go a long way to kind of boost the offense in Minnesota because obviously when it came time for the playoffs even though their regular season stats for goals for were pretty decent uh, when it came time for the playoffs against the Winnipeg Jets that's certainly an area that they struggled with obviously they were playing against Connor Hellebuck who was having a tremendous season in goal and continued that in the playoffs but you could tell that it's an area that the Minnesota Wild just really struggled with and they, they need to shake things up and get that moving and otherwise Otherwise, they'll have a real hard time moving forward here to kind of take things a step further to being a cup contender. Um, so we'll see what Paul Fenton does. His first year's GM. We'll see what he does at the draft. I think this 2018 NHL draft certainly has a high potential to be um, a lot of activity amongst the trade market. So we'll see what goes down. So leave some comments down below. What do you expect from the Minnesota Wild during the 2018 offseason here? We're not too far away from the draft. We're not too far away from free agency. So we should see some activity here coming soon. So let me know your thoughts on how this team needs to move forward to have a shot at being a contender moving forward here into the future. Now, if you're new to the channel, hope you consider subscribing as well. We cover all 31 NHL teams. There's plenty of content here for all hockey fans to enjoy. So make sure if you're new, you hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button as well. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you did. As always, thank you very much for watching, everybody. We will catch you next time.